Hello. Today is Friday. You're in the future if you're watching this. I'm in the past. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be painting the exhaust and I'm going to be doing the varnish and showing how I apply decal. This is all again very basic stuff, but we'll you know I I got it, so you you guys can watch it. Um, I cut out a lot of the mixing. Um, I, initially I thought it was useful and then after I went back after the fact it just, you know, there, it wasn't, I wasn't talking and you can't really see the bottles very well. So I'll give a, ble a br 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 brief explanation. This is a flat black. I think I start with a pure flat black and I'm going to cover up the red brown I did before. I didn't really have, like I said, I didn't have a clear way to go with the red brown, so I thought I would just go with kind of like something a bit more standard in my opinion, and something that we could easily kind of highlight and maybe match the rest of the modulation that's going on with the rest of the vehicle. So the um, the the dilution is about, you know, 60-40, pure flat black, and I'm just going to be hitting all the parts of the uh, of the tank, uh, not of the tank of the exhaust. And you can see there's a great view of the airbrush, not a whole lot of uh, view of the action. I don't really have a good way to capture this. I think very early on, I kind of I didn't really want to turn my channel into the airbrush channel because, in my opinion, I mean, there's like a bazillion. I, at one time, I compared it to like if you gathered all of the learning of humanity into one place. And then in another pile, you amassed everything that had ever been written about airbrushes. It would probably dwarf all of human learning by, you know, seven, ten fold over. I mean, just that's how much literature there is about it. And there's plenty of people who are really good at it. And they have lots of recipes and techniques. So I feel like it's sort of redundant. Uh, but what's even more redundant, I guess, talking about why it's redundant. Anyhow, um, we're going in with the exhaust. You can see I'm just layering it up. I'm going really slow. I'm using Tamiya X20A. I've heard people be critical of X20A. I find it to be pretty awesome in the airbrush and uh, working with the flat paint. And also, it's not bad if you paint with it. I know that probably uh, for people who live in hotter climates, the X20A doesn't work, but it seems to be very compatible with where I'm living right now. So what else can what else can I say about that? Um, it, it does uh, kind of extend the drying time a little bit, so you want to be mindful of that. And I know I've spoken before about um, airbrush performance and all that, and lacquers and whatever. I mean, really, you have to take everything I say with a grain of salt. I, 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 my opinions on all these materials change, um, not daily, but definitely frequently. And, you know, you have to, you have to stay open-minded because at the end of the day, it's all about the result. So... Um, see if you find something that works, go ahead and stick with it and you don't have to experiment like a crazy person unless you find that it stops working for you. I mean, if you find something that is ideal for your situation or your methodology, then I say by all means stick with it. Um, I'm hitting the, uh, top, those little, that little area behind there with the airbrush and there isn't a lot of overspray with, uh, this particular airbrush. It's, um, uh, it's a nicer airbrush, so it has a very focused kind of beam, and I'm I'm spraying it. I'm actually I've been raising my pressure a little bit. Um, it seems to help me hit where I want to hit uh, naturally. If you have higher pressure, you're going to have more overspray, so you have to have a bit more discipline on the trigger. Um, when I first started, I did a lot of trigger discipline exercises, and I was very frustrated. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I was doing it with um, water-based acrylics. But I mean, that's like. That's a that's a meat grinder for your patients, as far as uh, practicing your your early on skills. You know, there's a lot of drills you can do, uh, lines, dots, fades, dagger strokes, and so on. And all you really need is an airbrush, some paint, and a piece of paper. So that's something that um, you can do. And I I wouldn't say I have amazing trigger discipline still. Like you, there's people, especially the, the pros and guys who do this for a living. I mean, you'll see if you watch any of their videos, when they airbrush, it, you know, it's aggressive the way that they're moving their brush. And you're just like, oh, be careful, you know, because they're getting so close to the surface and they're just sweeping the brush back and forth. But their finger is so trained and so uh, disciplined that they can snap the air on and off. And it's uh, it's something else, but most also most pros they use two hands. So I think there's 
there's definitely a lot to be learned from that, but obviously, usually, you know, you can see right here, I'm holding a model in one hand and an airbrush in the other. So we're, we're a little limited. Let's see, have I finished up yet? Oh, I already did all the highlighting and everything. I, should, I didn't even talk about that. I used a medium sea gray uh, with black for the second highlight. And then finally for the, the ultimate highlight, it was a, just a full on medium sea gray without any black. And, you know, from time to time, you can, uh, if you're highlighting up from a darker color, you can just add whatever color you're using into the airbrush and uh, kind of to add a little bit of coherency with all that. So I'm using the Mission Models Clear. Uh, it's a pretty good clear. It's a nice gloss. And I know uh, previously I have said, I'll never gloss or I don't gloss. And, some, you know, sometimes I gloss. What, what can I say? You know, um, we all change. We're, we're allowed to grow. Uh, I've glossed in the past. I used to use Future. Now I use more specific modeling products. And varnishing does take a little bit of, um, it does take a little technique, but that's something that's pretty easy to figure out because when you want to, when you're doing like a gloss, you're going to want to apply it a little thicker and then you're going to want to see a little, you know, kind of what's called a wet coat. So you want to see it still drying when it hits the model. Not enough so it runs but enough that it's still a little wet when it hits a surface on a flat coat. So if you ever buy a flat coat, you're going to want it to kind of dry a little bit before it hits the model. And you want to do very quick passes. Otherwise, it's just going to look like a satiny coat. I learned that with uh, Mission Models Flat, and I've done it before. I mean, when I used to use Tamiya Flat Clear or Tamiya uh, Clear mixed with Tamiya Base, if you linger too long in any one particular area, that's what's going to happen. It'll pull up, and despite the fact that there's some of that drying or that uh, that matting agent inside of the um, inside of the paint, it'll still kind of give you a little bit of gloss. So I'm I'm getting all around the model. Uh, I've cut out all the parts where I add. I had to add a ton of uh, clear to cover this entire thing. It, it, like I said, it's enormous. And I think I'm hitting the tracks. Obviously, I didn't need to do that, but I, I'm using my airbrush gun. Uh, my airbrush gun. I'm using my varnish gun to do this uh, particular thing. I have one airbrush set aside. It's a Badger Patriot. I just use that now for um, uh, primering and varnishing. And that's really, if you, if you can only afford one airbrush, I don't know, we can talk about that more in the future, but it's it, it just makes your life easier. It's not absolutely necessary, and you can clean your airbrush um, between whatever you're going to do. It just, obviously, it's going to take more time, and you might have some interactions sometimes that are a little annoying. So uh, you don't need to buy six airbrushes, and uh, five of them all do the same thing, like somebody I know. Um you can see here, uh, I struggle to get the decal on, and I'm just kind of lifting it a little bit with the with the brush. I've seen um, people use the finger. Uh, if you've ever seen Plasmo on YouTube, he's a big finger guy. He uses his fingers to place all his decals, and um, I just, like, my finger twitches. It kind of, like, involuntarily twitches sometimes, and so, like, right when I just have it in the perfect spot, I'm like, oh, and then it'll twitch, so... I've, I've always kind of put them on with the brush. I do the tweezer brush, and um, I don't know. There's probably better ways to do it, but that's just the way that works for me. So bear that in mind. Here you see with the I'm using Microset and Microsol. This is a very uh, popular type of setting agent. Um, you hear about it a lot. I know that you know there are other setting agents out there. I haven't tried them. I have used testers, like the old school testers decal setting agent, and that worked fine on GW decals. Uh, right now, you know, I've switched to Microsoft, Microset, and Microsoul. Um, that also works fine for me. There are hotter agents out there, and I've even heard of some people using like Mr. Leveling Thinner to smooth out decals, but that's kind of like, that's not decal 101, that's decal 201 or 202. I don't know. That's, that's, some, de that's some deep technology right there. But anyhow, this stuff works just fine. You're still going to get a little bit of um, like a little bit of a pronounced edge around your decal. So you can mitigate that with uh, either some flat coating or something. You might want to do it before you go into the weathering process because uh, that cover the decal that is. Because if you don't, you can get like a buildup of um, wash or whatever your oil paint rendering around the decal. So uh, either you need to... 
uh, adjust for that and identify it, or you need to cover it up with some um, some of your uh, gloss or matting agent beforehand so that you don't have that as pronounced an edge. And even still, depending on the decal, it still might have a little bit of an edge and you might get a little bit of stuff there. But if you're using like a, enamel or oil product, you should be able to clear it away for the most part. Even um, lately, I've been using watercolor pencil a little bit. That would clear away. Acrylics, obviously, once they're on, they're on. Um, if you apply acrylic over a lacquer coat, then you can lift it up with a little bit of um, Vallejo or most airbrush thinners or a little bit of airbrush cleaner. But if you apply it over an acrylic base coat and you try to clean up your acrylic uh, boo-boo with uh, acrylic thinner, you're just going to gobble right through the base coat and probably through the primer. And this is uh, both an acrylic primer and an acrylic base. So, um, and I, you know, earlier on in the process, I did, I did try to mitigate that, or I did try to fix that golden fingerprint, like I said, and you can see there's still metallic fingerprints, but I was like, you know what, I'm just going to roll with it. I'm going to try to maybe put some chipping in there. Cause honestly, like this is starting to, I remember at the time, I think it only took about six days, but I was like working steadily for six days. This is probably early to pre Corona or no early, I'd say early first third of Corona, I was staying up every night, kind of just trying to power through uh, and get to the weathering because this thing was, you know, like I said, it's a huge model. So anyhow, uh, you can see here I'm rolling out all the little air bubbles. That's that's just a fact of life when it comes to decals. And many people will tell you that you need to have a gloss base under the decal. Mm, the jury's out. I seem to I seem to get less uh, silvering when I do gloss under it, but there are people who disagree with that or at least who say that that is uh, nonsense i was planning on uh, glossing this thing anyways because we're going to be doing a pin wash so there's no reason to wait until after the fact and i'm glad i remember i think at the time when i did it i was like oh i need to gloss it so anyhow uh now i'm going back in with the microsol and with this particular thing with the microsol you can't really rush it and sometimes you have to do several coats so you just put it on there and then just walk away just do something else or build another model and just kind of let it work its magic. If you try to, uh, if you try to rush it, you can uh, either tear the decal or it's not going to do what it needs to do, which is kind of like work on that decal and soften it up. So anyhow, that's uh, we got a relatively short one this week. Um, thanks for checking in. Uh, this is Scarlet and Sable. Uh, please hit the like. And uh, we will see you guys in the next part. I don't even know what it is. I'm going to be just as surprised as you guys. Talk to you soon.